Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video, and the final video for the Wielder of Magic Beatdown Battle rerun. We've done EX3, now it is time to do Inferno 3. Now this stage is not a lot of fun. It, it really isn't. It doesn't seem that difficult looking at the raw stats. He has less than a million HP. He has very, very high attack and very, very high defense, which is a problem because this is an orange stage. And as you know, orange, well, or maybe you don't know, this game does not really do a lot of favors for orange teams. We have the meta that you're supposed to run for this stage, Wielder of Magic. There's a New Year's Blessing team, which is not good for the stage, and there's a couple reasons why. And, um, yeah, those are the only two relevant EX teams that have oranges out of the entire year and a half, more than a year and a half that EX has been a thing. So we're kind of on a low ball here. Why is uh, New Year's Blessing not good for the stage? Well, uh, because he has a lot of physical resistance and a lot of crit resistance, and those resistances go up. So they start at 50, they become 100, and then 150, and I don't even know if you make it to 150 because you just die on turn 6. Because he gives himself the ult, he gives himself a 100% physical attack, he already has really high attack on top of stacking fire attack, um, not a lot of things survive. And because this is the meta that immediately followed Vengeance, they had to make it so you couldn't just cheese it with Vengeance. So greens are nerfed for 10 turns. He seals body and spirit skills, including the rear guard, for 3 turns, and he reapplies this every single time it's about to expire, so you can never use Vengeance skills or heal skills in general. So that's a problem. And the things that he is buffing, fire attack, physical attack down here, uh, well, physical attack up here. These are things that the Vengeance team does not seal. They seal Pierce, Crit, and Normal Attack. That's it. So Physical Attack, Fire Attack, not affected. You cannot use Vengeance, you cannot stun cheese this stage, which really drops your options down, because you also can't crit, and you don't want to use Physical, which eliminates New Year's Blessing Shinsha from being a single target nuker. Trust me, I tried. She did like 63,000 damage on a fully buffed nuke. Uh. We've got almost a million, so not great. Options for the stage are limited. If you cannot beat it, don't feel bad. It's not like you're losing all that much. You're losing a moat. Oh no. Probably people who are looking at this video don't even have level 100 units to begin with that can use moats. So you're really not losing out on that much. All right, the first team we're going to show is obviously the actual meta itself, built for Inferno 3. We've got Milam. We've got the old Goddess of Destiny Reign, because when this team came out, Violet did not exist. V uh, Visions of Koli is Violet. So the next best thing we had for a magic buffer was Reign. And because Reign is also built for a burst team, you can actually get the most out of her magic skill and give it to Shinsha. Rong is our turn one orb changer, Hinata is our element buffer, and our future hand of oranges if we want it. And then Shion, or not Shion, but Shizu, is another single target damage dealer who's kind of sub DPS with having some gimmicks for her abilities and Shinsha is our primary damage dealer. So this this team obviously is not very difficult to run in this stage. It's built for it. The stage wants pierce, it wants oranges, it wants water magic. Water is not is still to this day not in a super great spot because the meta we just got the protectors of peace those two water characters are one physical, two crit focused and three not not an orange team. <laughs> Three things go against them, so you can't use Protector Peace Rimuru or Shion to their full capabilities here, which leaves us with kind of old water units. Shinsha, Hinata, Rain, Water Shuna, maybe if you want to bring her for an alt buff. That's certainly a possibility. You could bring her in instead of uh, Rain if you wanted. But turn one, we will just go ahead and swap. We'll leave this. We, uh, we took out Rain for Shinsha in the first slot because we needed Ranga's Convert, and he only changes Wielder of Magic Orbs. I don't know what I'm waiting for here. Uh, but So we needed to do that. And this gives us a full hand of oranges turn one, gets us barely a protector, and gets us a lot of alt gauge, which is good. And that's pretty much what we're looking for here. So 26,000 damage, pretty good. 
This hand being a three and three is also pretty good. There's the uh, there's the body and spirit seal, so no vengeance for you. Hinata has an alt. Eh, sure, whatever. I don't really care about it. Let's get her out of here. We don't have an alt swapper on this team, and we're gonna pull in another Shinsha orb, which is good for us. We'd still get her alt even if we didn't have another Shinsha orb incoming, but we're gonna send it anyways. Or we're gonna use it anyways. So Ranga can come in for Hinata. After we use a, uh, Hinata's future hand of orange skill, this means that no matter what RNG happens, next turn will be set for oranges that'll not be nerfed or anything. So now, take Hinata out. We use Milam. She gives us 40 skill points. She'll convert this hand to full oranges. And she gives us Pierce Rate for two turns. So now we'll use the first Shinsha buff, which is 100% damage on oranges, 60% protection gauge on oranges. And the Ranga skill gives us 30% Pierce power. And another buff to the skill points on oranges, which will help get us points back. We're not capped, but we're very close. And then we don't have another Milam to use right here. But that's fine, because the Pierce rate from Milam lasts for two turns, and we use the future Hand of Oranges, which means that no matter what, we have a full Hand of Oranges right here. And because we have Protection Gauge, we do actually get another Milam, but in case you don't have access to that, it's not truly a big deal. It just allows us to use a bit more points here. So 95, we're going to use the Magic Buff. Still full power on turn three. All right. Then we'll bring Hinata in. And we'll use her element buff. Boom. And then, because we have access to Milam, we can use the alt resistance down skill from Shizu. If you don't have access to Milam and you didn't get her this turn from from traits, I wouldn't use that. I would just use Shinsha's buff skill and we would forego the Shizu buff. You'll still do plenty of damage here. As personified by this nuke. And I don't really watch this animation very often, so we're gonna watch it. <laughs> Halloween 2023. Shinsha. Magical Sweet Honey does... 725,000. And we crit there, which is not good. Because we crit, we would have done over a million. But he had a lot of crit resistance at that point. So, while it was enough to kill, it could have been a lot higher. But there's the full meta team as it's supposed to be run. Let's move on to the two alternatives that I have for you. All right, next team is Exalted Champions almost in its entirety. Velzard, Veldora, Rimuru, which might be a stretch for a lot of people. Um, I'm sure there's a substitute you can use. Guy is gonna be kind of important. Violet is going to be fairly important. We need her, we need her big damage buff. And then Milim as our single target DPS. Um, I know the stage nerfs greens. It's by 80%, which means that Veldora giving us 70 covers most of it. Not all, but most of it. Protection gauge for greens on the charm for Velzard means that we can at least get some extra protection gauge. But the alt rush from Guy is going to be very important because we're not going to get a lot of that. So again, we're bringing a burst damage team with a very strong single target nuker, Milum. Problem is that Half of her personal buff doesn't matter here because it's weakness strike, and we are not type advantage against the golem. So here we're going to send four oranges, and we're just going to have to live with it because oranges, one, don't give us a lot of gauge, two, kind of suck, and three, doesn't really preclude us to getting a lot of protection gauge here. So we're running a few different characters with protection gauge turn one, or turn two, but it's still not enough to give us Velzard. So we're going to alt rush here with Guy, Gives us at least one. And then we'll bring Violet in. No, we'll bring Veldora in. Violet. Violet. Violet comes in. And then we're going to send this. And we just need to get a Velzard here. Some way, shape, or form we need to get a Velzard. Now that we have two alts, this is why we brought Exalted Champion Rimuru. Because we need his rainbows to begin with. So Violet comes out. We brought her in primarily for her protection gauge on turn three. That's the only reason. She didn't actually do anything. <laughs> apart from that, but we'll use the green buff from Guy, or not Guy, but Veldora. We'll use the alts, the rainbow alt swap from Rimuru, and then this combined with the rainbows, combined with the protection gauge charm, combined with the Veldora buff, means that we can actually cycle Velzard pretty efficiently. And this does get us the EX, or does it get us the EX alt for these two? We might have to use another stack of the alt rush. Mm, it does, okay, perfect, good. So now we're ready. 
sealed. All right, whatever. We have enough points to use the Rimuru and the Guy buff here, and we can then send Milam and Guy away. And then we just have to survive turn four, and then we'll nuke turn five. So Violet comes back in, Veldora comes back in, we used Velzard, and because we have a lot of gauge now from that last turn, we have enough to send these nerfed greens that are still technically buffed by Veldora for one more turn, but we'll at least make back the points to get back to cap, and we'll make back our protection gauge, which is the most important thing. So we're, we're doing shit for damage here, because he's got guard and our greens are nerfed into the ground, but we're setting ourselves up for success with this nuke, and a counter for 7,000 damage is not something you really want to see sometimes. But now we're ready to go. It's unfortunate that a lot of our orbs are violet, but it it's still okay, because we do have two EX alts that are going to be pretty heavily buffed, because we already have the attack, we already have the synergy, now we're going to get the magic buff, now we're going to get the extra alt damage from Milim, because again, weakness strike does not apply here. And then we'll use the, Mim uh, the Milim gimmick where she can use her ult for free. Not that it's going to matter. But now we use Velzard. That's the Drago plus the 50% element damage. So Guy is first because he lowers defense or something. Magic resistance. Defense down. And then Milim will nuke. And she does 1.19 million. Which the Golem, even at full HP, only has 970. So certainly enough to kill him outright. If we hadn't sent Guy for her, she would have done maybe a million instead because of the defense lowering, but it is what it is. That's a team that can certainly do it. It just requires a number of units that you may or may not actually have. All right, the final team. Actually, their rerun is currently going on right now. The second anniversary meta, Visions of Coleus. And while, yes, I'm fully aware that blue orbs are nerfed in this stage, we have the power of rainbow orbs, which is always a nice thing. So, Lumi's giving us attack stacks plus synergy, which when this beatdown battle came out, synergy didn't exist, so it has no defense against it. We're going to bring Cleesh because I want a green orb changer, and she was the free-to-play unit. I'm just going to use the full meta here. And then Rimuru, Rainbows, Blanc, Violet, and Jean. We're going to need all three of their alts. If you can get an EX alt for one of them, great, but... I, for this run, I did not get EX alts. I got three single targets, which is still what we're going to need here. So turn one, again, we have no way to deal with it. I mean, if you want to take Cleesh out and bring Light Hinata or someone to convert, you certainly can. I don't really know if that's ideal, taking away one of your blue orb changers when Rimuru needs blues to convert to rainbows, but hey, you do you. Counterattack is not great. Thankfully, no one is type disadvantage on this team, which is a plus. And now we're going to kind of have to burn a few turns, because I don't have a lot of points. I can't just freely willy-nilly orb change then rainbows. So we're going to have to force our way to getting a number of natural blue orbs, or at least a good way to set it up that we can convert them. So we'll leave Rainrow here. He's got four orbs, because he's got one future orb incoming. So we're going to send the two violets or the two blues, it doesn't really matter, two violets, and we're going to bank on Rimuru getting a lot of orbs, which thankfully, he does get a lot of orbs. And now that we've burned off a couple turns, we have enough to convert here. Problem, though, is that I do not have enough points to both blue convert and rainbow. So we're just going to blue convert, and then we'll bring Jean in for Rimuru, and these orbs are nerfed. We're not going to get a lot of gauge, but she can at least get a stack of the attack and synergy from Lumi, and then we'll send it. And because we're now getting 100 extra SP, we'll get some points back here. Not a lot, but some. And it's enough now to maybe convert, maybe get some rainbow orbs next turn. Or we could just naturally get five oranges, and that could work out fairly well. Our turn limit is turn the end of turn six is when he kills us so if you can build up and get some alts before turn six it'll be fairly good so we're gonna take john out because she's not getting an orb here so we want to bring her in next turn for whoever else gets orbs that we can hopefully convert to rainbows now and we have two alts which means we have two guaranteed blue orbs 
which works out very well because we can just alt swap away with Blanc and then use Violet's Orb Change that gives us six blues, which we can then use for Rimuru to convert to rainbows. And it's a kind of an even spread, unfortunately. Thankfully, Jean already does have some alt gauge, so we'll just it doesn't really matter who you come in and out for. But now they're full blues, now they're full rainbows, and now Jean comes in and we'll have a decent amount of alt gauge and another stack of Lumis. We've only gotten two stacks of her this entire time. It's not a lot. And we also, okay, so we have an EX alt for Violet. I didn't think we did that last night. We got very close to an EX alt for Blanc and we don't have an EX alt for Jean. But we do have one. Violet almost bought the farm though, because this guy hits hard. He's got a lot of attack. He's got a lot of physical attack, but here, Another stack of Lumi, so that's up to three. And now we have to pick and choose. We only have 260 points. So one, the alt buff affects everybody, the magic buff affects everybody, and the EX alt buff only affects Violet, but it does also put space resistance down. We could have used the other Blanc buff, but we wouldn't have gained synergy, or we wouldn't have gained weakness strike there, because we're not type advantage, and we would have already only been synergy down. I figured the alt buff would be better, because we're nuking with two different space characters, one of them who had an EX alt. So Jean, 336,000, is enough. Turn 6 is the limit. If you don't kill him here, he's going to wipe the entire front line. But those are really the only three main line teams that I have found that can clear Inferno 3. The huge nerf to blues and greens is a problem, the body and spirit seal is a problem, his high attack and his guard means you don't do traditionally lots of damage to him, it really cuts down on the amount of teams you can do, as most Inferno 3 stages do to begin with. This one, I think, is a little bit more difficult, just because our complete and utter lack of orange teams that can you can at least try and bring in. But if you have any other teams that you found that can clear Inferno 3, let me know in the comments below. But that's it from me. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.